Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing? I was in here curling, not curling, twisting. You know, it's an old-fashioned curl, but twisting my hair. And I was just going to come to y'all when I finish. But when the Lord say move, I move, I move, I move, I move, just like that. Um, there is such a powerful word today. Such a powerful word. I've already jumped in and given God praise and glory. I've already shouted about it. I've already took off running about it. Let me tell you, I've already. When I had to have surgery, um, before the surgery, the doctor said to me that they're going to remove the problem, <clears throat> but there would be some pain still coming every now and then, if not every month, okay? He said that there would be some pain. Good morning, Pastor Bowden, Pastor Lori. Um, he said that there would be some pain that would still come, even though the problem had been moved. He said that my body because it was used to, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. I'm already excited about it because it's already been preached to me. That's how come I can come preach to you uh, or share it with you. Um, but he said that um, because the body had gotten used to that um, organ operating in there, that they would remove it. But if they did not take out the complete thing, all right, y'all ready? If they did not remove the complete, like I pretty much would be functioning on nothing if they had taken out everything. So he said, we're going to take out the problem, but you're going to still experience some pain. So for those of you today that keep talking about, woo, woe is me, and oh, I keep going through, our brother Paul can help us be all the way great. Your sister princess can come on up in here and help you to be all the way great today. Because guess what? Honey, there is some situations in your life where the problem has been moved, but the pain hasn't gone anywhere. There are some of you that have forgiven some people. Uh-huh. And the problem is no longer there, but the pain is still there. Mm. Mm. When I tell you that God comes all the way through, he comes all the way through for us. He doesn't have to do anything for us. People say, well, princess, how do you forgive? Princess, how do you continue to press on in spite of what that person did to you? Princess, how are you, you know, uh, functioning in that toxic environment? Because you said God told you, didn't tell you to go nowhere yet. How are you doing that? Hey, Elsie. Y'all ready for some good word from the Lord? 2 Corinthians 12, 7. And 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 12. I'm going to start right here. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I am given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. <laughs> hey, glory to God. I'm already excited. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect, perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. So that Christ's power may rest on me. Mm, I'm already excited. I'm already excited. Let me tell you why I'm already excited. Because <laughs> sometimes, again, the problem is gone, but the pain is still there. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight, children of God, in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
For when I am weak, then am I then I am strong. And then I want to skip down to 12. I preserve in demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle, including signs, wonders, and miracles. And the way princes interpreted that is, I ain't just showing y'all the good stuff. I want to help you understand that sometimes the bad stuff, the bad stuff. Do you hear me today? The bad stuff. The stuff that you thought you weren't going to get over. That trouble that you thought that you, you look, you had to completely forget about. And it won't go nowhere. Because that pain, it did something to you. That girl lied to you. That man mistreated you. You know what I'm saying? That pain just wouldn't go nowhere. Go nowhere. Okay? 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Okay? I read all the way to 10. I skipped 11. All right. And I went to 12. Good morning, Shonda. Are y'all ready? When the doctor told me that I would, they would take away the problem. Okay. Take away the problem. But I would still experience some headaches. Because again, my body was used to having that organ there. And there were some things that happened every month for us women. Um, but because my body was thinking that this thing is still there, the regular behaviors would still be going on. Glory to God. Good morning, Michelle. Y'all ready for a word? Y'all ready for a word? Get ready. The reason why I get to uh, share these lives with you, sometimes crying, sometimes laughing, sometimes shouting, sometimes praising God, sometimes... Uh, broken, sometimes um, messed up from the flow up. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'm in different um, feelings about that situation. There are some days when I can talk about my pain and my struggle and I can give it to you with the anointing and the enthusiasm that I'm supposed to have. And then there are some days when I'm crying and I don't know what to do and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, with this chick here. Because our our bodies are physical, okay? Our bodies are physical. Get ready, somebody. Get ready. Paul said that three times I asked God to take this away from me. Good morning, Dewan. Get ready, girl. Three times I asked God to take this away. I pleaded with him. I begged God. I don't know about you, but I've had to beg God. I, I look and, and and he didn't tell me I had to beg him. I'm talking about that's how I felt like. I felt like I had to keep on saying, "How come me, God?" I felt like I had to keep on going to him and and saying, "Would you please? Why don't you? Can you?" Hey, Sharika. And it wasn't that he was ignoring me. He wanted me to rely on his strength, his power. He wanted me to see what I have the capabilities of doing. He wanted me to operate in the fullness, okay, of my anointing. He wanted me to walk by faith and not by sight. He wanted me to look to the hills from which cometh my help because all of my help comes from the Lord. Good morning, Sharita. He wanted me to know that I could speak to mountains and mountains move. He wanted me to walk and be rest assured that no matter what you face today, I, but I still keep thinking about what you did to me. I have moved on past the, the foolishness, but for some reason, it just tends to keep on being an issue. I got trust issues because you, what you did to me. Glory to God. Mm. Um, I'm looking at folks side eyed. Because of what I done been through. But when I, I when I tell y'all that I stopped by today to tell somebody that guess what? God's grace is sufficient, honey. God's grace is sufficient. Look, if you ever want to realize or see who you really are in God, if you ever want to see how powerful you are in God, when you get weak, when you get weak, <clears throat> it Paul said, I delight in my weaknesses. Because then it is revealed to me. 
Glory to God. Who I am in Christ. I, I delight in insults because then it is revealed to me who I am in Christ. I delight in hardships because then it is revealed to me who I really am in Christ. I, I delight in persecutions. <clears throat> I delight in difficulties for when I am weak. Then I am strong. See, flesh likes to rise up. And we think we can protect ourselves with this flesh stuff, honey. But I stopped by today to tell you, when you rise up in Christ, because his grace is sufficient. And then the Holy Spirit told me to tell y'all what grace means. And I wanted you to have not just a natural definition of grace. I wanted you to have divine grace. I wanted you to have the definition of divine grace, okay? It's when humans regenerate and look and are sanctified to inspire virtuous impulses and to impart strength to endure trials and resist temptations mm. okay we can then operate in our excellency okay yeah me and you we don't fell out but now because god's grace is sufficient I don't have to keep looking at you as the person who cheated on me. I don't have to keep looking at you as the person who lied on me. I don't have to look at you as the person who did me wrong. I don't have to look at you as the person who caused me to take steps backwards. I don't have to look at you like that. Because the problem, since the problem is gone and the pain is there, it's keeping me from being conceited. Mm, 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 mm. Glory to God. <laughs> It's keeping me from being conceited. See, I share my story not because I want to bring your name up. I share my story because I want to give God the glory for what he brought me out of, for how he brought me through. I want to bless his name. When I look at myself in the mirror now, I don't see. I don't see princes the same way. And I, and I had a great example that the Holy Spirit gave to me. Let me see what Sharita's saying. There's something I had to learn. Delight yourself. Yes, honey. Delight myself in the Lord when things aren't going the way I think they should. Yes, yes, yes. Three, look, three times Paul said, take this away from me. Take this feeling away from me, Lord. I, I can hear in my spirit some of you saying, Lord, I don't want to act like this. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to think like this. I don't want to uh, look mistreat this person. I don't want to do this. And instead of God healing, oh, mm, instead of God healing, because he's capable of doing that, he left the thorn. He left the thorn in Paul's side. He left it there. And he said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. What he was saying to Paul is, I need you not to stand up in flesh, but stand up through through your spirit. Stand up. Stand up in your spirit. Stand up in your spirit. You, if you're not operating in the spirit, you're not doing nothing. You've not, if you're not, if you're not forgiving in the spirit, you're not doing nothing. If you're not loving in the spirit, you're not doing nothing. You're wasting time. Truth is, so you're wasting time. Because then you're going to be wishy-washy. One day you're going to be forgiving the person. The next day you're going to be bringing up stuff. You know what I'm saying? You you be talking about some, you know, I let that go. And then next thing you know, you here you go again. Here you go again. Because you didn't do it in the spirit. Because when you do it in the spirit, there's a different power. There's a different level. I'm telling you, there's a different level. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to help somebody today. It's a different level. You don't even see the people the same. You feel sorry for people that's mistreated you. Versus you being angry and mad at them. You start feeling sorry for them. When Jesus took that pain and endured all of that stuff, that beating, that beating, and, and before he went on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, or on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what it happen when you do it in the spirit. I was thinking about, this is what I was going to say. I was thinking about when I was pregnant with my children. And I remember there was just a pain, a pain that I had to endure. Now, I don't know many women that can say they ain't have no pain unless they just was numb. And, and I had natural births. I didn't do the epidurum 
on my daughter, but I end up having to have it for my sons. So let's use my daughter, my, my first baby. There's a pain that I had to endure in order for her to come out. Glory to God. There's a pain that somebody is having to endure in order for you to come out. In order for greatness to be birthed, in order for you to walk in the fullness of the Lord and know that you're walking in there and that look and that you that you're covered by Christ, there's something I'm telling you. There's something that you gotta push out, and there's something that you gotta go through, and there's some stuff. And I'm telling you, all this right here with with um, giving the enemy credit for something. No, 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 no. If God allowed it, I will push. If God allowed it. Because I'm a child. I belong to him. I'm his child. If God allowed it, it's going to work out for my good. People talk to me all the time. Well, Princess, you know, he cheated on me. Princess, you don't understand, but, you know, she did me wrong. And Princess, you don't understand this and you don't understand that. And I be saying to myself, honey, you, you don't know what I understand. You don't know what I understand. Because I have needed God's grace. I have needed, I have been in need, good morning, Kamika. I have been in need of God's grace. And he told me, he said, it's sufficient. Maybe I need to look up for sufficient. Because I told you what grace means. And then let me tell you something somebody else said right quick about grace. Unmerited, divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration or sanctification. A virtue coming from God. That was grace. That was great. So let me tell you what sufficient means. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case you don't know. Mm, my grace is sufficient. Enough. I already knew the word. I already knew. I just wanted to read it to you from the Google. Enough. Adequate. Honey. Oh, I want to cry right now because he's so good. 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 My grace is sufficient. It's enough. Who? It's not enough. Ooh. I don't know if y'all felt that in your spirit, but it's enough, honey. Mm. It's enough. Ooh. Mm. The reason why they hit me in that way is because when I think about the problems I've had, when I think about the pains that I've had, when I think about the things that I've had to endure, God said my grace is sufficient. So that means that an unmerited, something I don't deserve, divine assistance to make me, look, to push me, to, to press, help me press, it's enough. It's enough. It's enough. I don't have to worry about that. Yes, yeah, Cynthia, it's enough. It's enough. Then it says freely given, unmerited favor, and the love of God. It's enough. So it don't matter about the problem. Sometimes the problem, like I told you, it's gone. But the pain is still there. But God's grace is enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Unmerited divine assistance. I'm telling you, if you ain't relying on the assistance, I don't know how you're making it. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. When I think about the things, okay, when I think about it, when I just take a minute, it don't, it don't take much for me, honey, to start just thinking of the goodness of Jesus. Elsa, you on the same page, honey. When I just start thinking about the fact that I, he's asking me to forgive somebody. He's asking me to be quiet and let it go. Because what he's saying to me is that, princess, my grace is sufficient. My grace is enough. You can operate 
through me. You don't have to do this by yourself. You don't have to face this situation by yourself. You don't have to encounter this thing by yourself. I'm right here. I never left you. I'm not going to leave you. All you got to do is understand that when you are weak, when you are weak, you still get to stand up. When you are weak, you still get to worship. When you are weak, you still get to rise up. When folks thought you was dying, honey, you, you still going to get up. You still going to get up because my grace is sufficient. I'm telling you, I told you, the doctor told me, princess, even though we're going to remove these parts of your body out every month, you're going to still have mm, Jesus, some pain. But the pain is not there. Now, as something that is a threat to you, it's a reminder. It's a reminder. Y'all, God ain't sent this stuff to torture you. He didn't put you in any situation for you to sit up here and just replay this stuff over and over and over and over again. For you to just sit here and think and water in this mess and think that you ain't gonna never come out and you ain't gonna never, it ain't gonna never get right and it ain't gonna never be turned around and it ain't gonna never be fixed. He's reminding you so you won't get conceited. That's what Paul said. He's reminding you so that you will have remembrance of his goodness and his grace and his mercy. He's reminding, thank you, Dewan. He's reminding you of it. He ain't sit up there and let somebody come, glory to God, and rape you for you to be tortured and tormented for the rest of your doggone life. He did not do that. He did not do that. He didn't do that. He did not cause this illness. Let me tell you something. A lady that I was helping had cancer. And she said to me, Princess, the cancer is gone. But now I got to work on my fingers and my, I think her feet and stuff because there was evidence of the chemo there. Okay, of the chemo. And she said, I, I need encouragement. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is a present help. I'm telling you, I rely on it. I rely on it. I rely on it. I ain't got nothing else. So I was sitting there listening to her. How do you tell somebody? Glory to God. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me to tell her. I'm going to say what she said. Then I'm going to tell you what I told her. We were in the room. We were in a closet. Because she pulled me in the closet. And she said. Because of the stage 4 cancer. Somebody. I'm telling y'all. I'm just taking everything in me. Not to jump up out of this chair. Because she had stage 4 cancer. She said, my skin tone is darker. My nails are um, messed up. My fingertips are um, dark. She said that um, she has issues with her hands or whatever. And she looked at me. She said, I get so depressed. I get so down sometimes. But I still push myself to praise him. I still push and press my way to the altar. I still push and press. And guess what I told him? I said, honey, that's just a reminder that, that you had to encounter. That's just the, look, some of us going to have some scars. Some of us are going to have some wounds. Some of us are going to have something to remind us of the goodness of Jesus. So this is what I told her. I said, those are your battle scars. You came out. Glory to God. You came out. Honey, if God brought out that cancer and you went through that chemo and all that radiation and all that stuff, honey, and you still here to tell me about your fingertips. You're still here to tell me about your feet. You're still here to tell me about the discoloration of your skin. Honey, if God took out the, the most poison, the problem. And all you got to endure is the little pain. Honey, hold on a minute. <laughs> hey, glory to God. I had to give God some praise right quick. Honey, <laughs> if all you 
<laughs> if all you got is is the evidence, <laughs> Sharita, if all you got, help me this morning. If all you got, if that's what you got, <laughs> yeah, Shonda, I'm here to, t honey, you on my live today because God's grace is sufficient. You on my live today. I promise you, you are, you remind me, you remind me, honey, I'm j just so you know, while you feel like you have to encourage yourself, you encouraging some other people, honey, because you out, you came out, I saw you ringing the bell, that's why I shared your video in the group, honey, because God's grace was enough. God's grace was enough. I'm telling you, it's enough to make you just lose your mind when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done. I'm telling you, it's enough to just make you just take our run to see the enemy want to get a sidetrack with the problem. But God said there will be some evidence of the pain. There will be some evidence. I'm telling you, there will be something because something got to remind us. Something got to remind us of how good God is. I'm telling you, even when you have kids, let me tell you this, those contractions, like I said, came as, as a reminder that there's something in me that needs to come out. Right? So then you would think that after that baby came out, that there will be no more troubles and no more whatever, whatever. But as long as, uh, uh, life goes on. Y'all know what I'm saying. Sometimes trouble come back again. And so guess what? If God brought, brought it out, can somebody catch on? Can somebody catch on right quick? If God brought the thing out and it let it exist on this side and it was birthed through you, the anointed one, then honey, grace is sufficient. Grace is sufficient now. Huh? I'm telling you, I didn't go through all of that for nothing. I had to birth out that thing. And then now when I'm facing this, the remnants of something, I don't know how to handle it. Honey, I, I, I could have died while having them kids. I'm not going to die while trying to raise them because he brought me out. I hope that helps somebody. I hope that helps somebody what I just said. I could have died birthing out them kids. I'm certainly, if I got past that part right now, because now, 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 I'm, I'm certainly not going to live my life worried and stressing myself out. Because if God brought me through the most challenging situation with them, which is to get them on this side of the earth, then I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to give it to him. I'm just going to give it to him. The problem with most of us is that we don't give it to him. I'm telling you, we don't give it to him. We still hold on to the pain thinking that the problem is still there. He has removed the problem. He has removed the problem. All you looking at now is the, the, the remnants, the, the, the little bit left from it. The little bit that's left from it. Now you got to heal from the thing that caused you the pain. But you've endured that. The major part of it. You've endured the major part of it. He brought you out. That stuff that you was going through in your marriage and your relationship and all that stuff right now. I'm telling you. Folks. Can I say this and be truthful? Jesus. Can I say this and be truthful? Y'all know a lot of people talk to me. A lot of people talk to me for wisdom and stuff like that. A lot of people talk to me. You know the one thing I want to just slap people upside the head with? I want to I wanna tell people. Do you understand that the person who made the humans is the only one that can fix the humans? Like sit down somewhere and shut up. Or get on your knees. Cry out to God. Ask God to help the people. The only one that can fix the human is the one who made the human. And here you go all the time. Get on my nerves. The Holy Spirit don't let me say that. But I want to say to the people, if you would get your behind out the way. Get, get out the way. Get on out the way. Why are you in the way? 
You are part of the problem. The problem, look, he's already turning around. He's already fixing it. He's already making a way. He's already going on before us. He's already. You, here you come. Here you come. Here you come. Why can't you just do what he asking you to do? Wow, look, wow. Wow, you operating. I'm just telling you. It, 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 it made me mad. It made me mad. I said, you're a child of God? Yes. I love the Lord. Y'all know scriptures, Bibles and forth. And I'm like, does anybody know Jesus? Like, I know Jesus. Like, I ain't perfect. But I do know him to be a savior. I do know him to be a healer. I do know he can turn people around. I do know that he can fix situations. I know that he's a present help in the time of trouble. I know that he is joy and sorrow. I know that he is hope for tomorrow. I know that he is a healer. I know him to be a deliverer. I know, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know. And that's how come I'm not wavering. I'm not going to, I have to talk to myself sometimes. I have to remind myself sometimes. So that way y'all won't think I think I'm perfect. I had to get myself together because flesh will do that. Things will come up and it will do that. But if you got to hurry up and regulate. No, no, no. You're not coming up in here. I'm not going to doubt the Lord. I'm not going to doubt the Lord. I got to believe with all my heart. My mind and my soul. I'm not going to doubt the Lord. And I'm not. I'm not giving up on my children. I'm not giving up on my marriage. I'm not giving up. I'm not. Nope. Nope. I'm not. I'm keep coming to this church. Y'all just keep acting like however y'all act. I'm, I'm, I got to be here. Y'all keep doing what you're doing, and I'm going to do what I got to do. That's how I act. Ask Toria. Toria, no. Ask Kamiko. Ask the folks. Let me, let me see anybody else I don't went to church with on here. Ask them. No. You're not going to run me off because I didn't come here for you. I came here to bless the Lord. I came here to lift up his name. I came here to worship. I came here to honor. Give honor what honor is due. You're not going to run me out of this. Honey, I done been through more pain than this. That's how I act. I done been through more pain than this. You're not going to cause me no. And I tell my children I love you to death. But you're not going to cause me to have no heart attack and all that. I already went through the most pain that I'm going to go through having you. And that is contraction. And that's the end of that. And I love you. Now get yourself together. Let's do this. Here. Yeah. Go with God. Be, keep talking about this. I'm telling you, go with God. When me and Reggie was having look issues, and I when we first got together in our marriage, you know what I said? You know I love you so much. I love you so much. I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to fight with you because it may cost me something. It's going. I know it's going to cost me something. I know it's going to cost me something. I ain't got time to be going over and over and over and over and reliving stuff or whatever. Every month, like I told you, after that surgery, I'm reminded that I used to have certain body parts. But guess what? When those headaches come, they come just like they did when I had the certain body parts. But guess what? God is telling me, Princess, you do not have cancer. Princess, you do not have a tumor anymore. Princess, your fibroid is gone. Princess, that part might be gone, but you're still able to operate, honey. You're still living. You're still breathing. You have to remind yourself, I'm telling you. And then, like Shonda said, sometimes you have to encourage That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. That's what that's I, I they don't ain't no simple way to do this. It just do it. Thank you, Kamika. Just do it. Lord, I can put my children in your hand. I'm gonna give my children to you. And Lord, I already know you know what to do with them. I don't know what to do with them. I can't be everywhere. I can't say everything and I can't speak for them. I can you know what I'm saying? All I can do is pray on their behalf. And then I'm gonna go on about my business. Thank you, Sharika. I'm going to go on about my business. Because God's grace is enough. God's grace is enough. He brought me out. He brought me through. He brought me over. Whew. Some of, some of the look, pain ain't going away. Some of the pain ain't going away. I'm just telling you. Some of the stuff you got to do. I'm telling you. when I The, the lady that I'm talking about. Honey, we had a Holy Ghost party up in that closet. I said, the thing that you got to focus on is you didn't die in that. You did not die in that. Sometimes God ain't going to remove the thorns. Y'all see, I'm telling you, in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, 
And then look, listen, listen, listen. I delight in weakness, in in insults. Talk about me, honey. Talk about me. Say what you got to say. I, I don't have nothing no more. I delight in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. Cause, honey, if when if, when you know who you are, you can delight in that stuff. That's how come Paul. Paul knew who he was in God. He could delight in that stuff. Yes, I've been knocked down, but honey, God will get me back up. Yes, my money is funny, but God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. My father owns the entire. The entire. I stopped by the day hell, hell braided. Now, I got to finish braiding the hell. I done figured out the Lord has helped me to figure out a way not to carry no heavy head around. He helped me. Because I not, do not need to be bothered with this stuff while I'm trying to let it grow. He is. He's capable more than able. So he said, my power is made perfect. So there y'all go for the day. There y'all go. Whatever you face, there y'all go. Just walk around the day. If you don't never walk around no more saying it, hopefully you'll say it enough today. God's grace is enough. When you look at that co-worker that keep on, God's grace is enough. God's grace is enough. When you look at them kids, God's grace is enough. When you look at that husband, God's grace, that wife, God's grace is enough. God's grace is, honey, he's so good. He's, and then, and then look, and end it with, I preserve and demonstrate among you the marks of a true apostle. If you really, really living for God, you already know that yes, I'm going to have troubles. Yes, I'm going to have pains, but God, but God, all the way. All the way, but God, but God, and I thank him for it. 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 I can't do nothing else but thank him for it. Because, honey, I get to sit before you all, honey, broken toe up and all that stuff. And he done just piece me back together again. Hey, y'all ever been touched? <laughs> Have you ever just felt God touch? Mm. Mm. And you just sit there. Mm. You just sit down. He knows all about your troubles. I hope that while I'm doing it, this to help somebody over there. Yes, Sharita. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the children, God, just say, God, touch me. God, help me to remember that your grace is sufficient. Three times, Paul asked you to remove it. That thorn, I know that was irritating. I can't even get no little paper cut. I can't get like a little uh, splinter in my finger. Mm -mm. That when I tell you that aggravate me more, I think than a cut, a real cut, like them little things right there, a thorn in your side. Mm hmm. Mm. He said, "I asked the Lord to take it away." Mm hmm. He said it was sent to me. Listen, I, it was sent to torment me. Mm hmm. Y'all see, I'm keep touching myself, cause that's I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will do that for you. I promise you. Just gently rest. Gently rest on me, God. Gently give me comfort and peace. Just gently, God. Gently. Gently. And then, honey, you will find yourself calming down. Just take your hand. I'm telling you, take these anointed hands. These hands y'all be using to touch other folks and stuff and, and do what you do. Take them to touch yourself. I'm telling you, when I get, when princes get worked up, this is what I do. I promise you. When princes get worked up, I take these anointed hands. Honey, if they can't, uh, but no princess, then I feel like they can't know nobody else. Can't touch nobody else. You see what I'm saying? And I know in my head this morning. I sure did. And I took that, I took the oil and I put it around my heart. And then I took the rest of the oil, just rub it well. I just, well, y'all have a blessed entire day.